So yeah, something like that. I actually became a lawyer because I'd kind of had this idea that this profession has so much purpose to it. I yeah. kind of enjoyed the idea that okay, you know, practicing the profession, it was very different from what I had envisioned. And you felt like you would have more meaningful or more impact if you were a filmmaker. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of how. And do you know how to make films? How did you learn? I am self-taught. So the latest one is uh, it's called Avaaz, a life in silence. It's about the first woman in Mardan who took a stand to educate hearing and speech impaired girls. My mom has been a huge support and uh, so in the beginning my dad was kind of like, okay, you want to be a lawyer, you know, why aren't you going in that direction? What's mm. happening? So if you're passionate about it, I think for sure there's so much um there's a huge gap I think right now and this is such a multifaceted profession in the sense that you've got I mean, we're sort of uncovering the truth. It it kind of gives you ex- it you're exposing different issues you're talking about change you're pushing for social activism so if you are passionate and this is something you are interested in then definitely i like every profession you think that um, so what really matters to me is that if the documentary i make if it can get that sort of traction that i wanted to get that's what really matters to me as far as personal recognition i don't really care much for that i mean it's obviously it's nice and all but at the end of the day if your documentary isn't going in the direction that you want it to if you it's not pushing for that kind of change that you see it and it just sort of d- dying like it gets kind of you know gets published and that's kind of it and you know what about the people behind do they ever sort of you know just do they ever sort of get any solution do they ever mm. sort of is there any end to it or is just sort of like a problem and that's it so for me i think that matters a lot assalam alaikum everyone and welcome to another episode of how does it work a podcast by pro pakistani uh, our guest today is a lawyer a filmmaker and a project coordinator for connect her did i get that right outreach coordinator outreach yeah. coordinator <laughs> chale thank you so much for being on the podcast halima thank you for having me acha so are you a lawyer or are you a filmmaker or are you a pro- what was it outreach coordinator outreach coordinator which one are you um i am i think i'd say a bit of everything but more of a filmmaker and an outreach coordinator than yeah than a lawyer then then a lawyer yeah. lekin aapne padha kya hai i've done my llb i'm an llb Achha. graduate i said lekin law nahi karni nahi i practiced for like uh, two years and then throughout i was practicing i was constantly making films and then i kind of realized that this is sort of i can make my passion into my profession and that's kind of where i took it from aur wo connection is tarah is it because when you were studying the law you wanted to help people and you felt like this is a better medium to help people was that was that one of the reasons is that how it kind of came together so yeah something like that i actually became a lawyer because i'd kind of had this idea that this profession has so much purpose to it i yeah. kind of enjoy the idea that okay you know you get to uncover the truth you get to sort of you have this opportunity to help people and i had a lot of family members who were lawyers so that kind of pushed me towards that direction but when i actually started practicing the profession it was very different from what i had envisioned and i think throughout that i was kind of noticing that okay there is a lack of you know their platform and medium given to so many issues around us and i thought that being a lawyer i'd fill this gap in but right. that wasn't the case so and I you felt like you would have more meaningful or more impact if you were a filmmaker yeah i mean that's kind of how and do you know how to make films how did you learn i am self taught okay yeah okay. so wow. i've always okay. from the beginning i'm self taught like as far as editing filming um everything i taught myself Okay. Well, at a pretty young age I think I started getting into it. So yeah. Nice. And abhi ek awards buzz chal rahi hai uh, <laughs> uh from what we've seen. Uh can you walk us through wh- where your films are, what awards they're nominated for and So um right now the current one has uh won at the Los Angeles Film Awards. It's one at the Prague International Film Festival. It's been selected at the Vancouver uh, South Asian Film Festival, Atlanta Women International Film Festival and we've been we're also waiting on the decision on a bunch of other awards. So fingers crossed let's see okay, what happens. Okay, nice, nice. And uh now that you've been selected in all of these awards, what is it's a documentary. Yeah. What's it about? So the latest one is uh, it's called Avaaz a life in silence it's about the first woman in Mardan who took a stand to educate hearing and speech impaired girls so you kind of follow her story as a mother and the struggles that she faced educating her hearing impaired daughter as a a woman who stood up to kind of break you know, cultural barriers to empower women and as a humanitarian who sort of takes a stand to you know change cultural norms change the mindset of the area or of Mardan and where do you find that story So I actually there's a lot I do a lot of research for every topic that I pick. I kind of try finding different topics that aren't getting the traction they deserve. And in this case I found, you know, I read up on Shakila Farooq and then I a lot of people had sort of talked about that there is this woman um in Mardan and she's ed- educating hearing and speech impaired girls. So I got in touch with her, I met her and the way she kind of like her dedication and defiance, you know, as 
that educationist, a mother, the way she was sort of moving forward and having this battle on so many fronts, you know, I kind of thought this story needs to come out of the shadows. And, and how did you get in touch with her? I kind of, I tracked her down, got her number, called her. And uh, at the end of the day, I mean, she she was living, I think um, she was in Islamabad that time. And Islamabad is a pretty small mm. place. So someone to the other one kind of knew her, who she was, got in touch with her, met her. And then and I started kind of talking to her and asking her about what she does, you know, what happened. And I met her daughter even. It was just, it, the whole entire story was incredible. Like, it, I felt like, you know, how can we not talk about this? How can we not film this? And she was open to filming this from the start? She was open to filming this. Uh, she had her concerns. Like, most people that I film, there are always these concerns. Um, she was very open to, okay, you know, she wanted, She was like, okay, get on. I'm fine. We can get on board. But she was not 100% sure of the other girls that I wanted to interview. So she said, you know, once we go there, we kind of have to talk to them and see if they would be willing. And that's kind of how it is with documentary filmmaking. Yeah. You are, it's always unprepared. There is no script. Yeah, there is yeah. nothing. You have to sort of, you might have one plan and then you go and something entirely different happens. And generally speaking, like from our experiences in production, women specifically in, in rural parts of Pakistan don't want to be in front of the camera. Their families don't want them to be in front yeah. of the camera. Was that something you faced as a yeah, issue? Yeah, I did. I mean, in relation to this documentary and in others that I've um, that I've made, there's always this point where you have everything is in place and then like at the last minute sort of like we've put everything in place, we're ready for the interview and we need this key interview. Supposing it's like the foundation of the documentary yeah. and then they'll back out and they'll be like, no, we can't do it. And then it's just, you know, for me, it's like, okay, back to the drawing board. I mean, we'll try talking to them, we'll try, but, you know, there's only so much you can do. So it's, we have to bring everything back, start from the beginning, understand, okay, if they don't want to do this interview, how do we, you know, change it or take someone else's interview? Sometimes we're lucky. Sometimes we get to convince them, make them understand the impact that they're going to have if they give this interview for others who are going to follow. Sometimes we're not that lucky. And then, you know. And, you know, with this particular film, you're getting a lot of buzz with the awards. But generally speaking, when you make a documentary or uh, anything of that sort, what do you do with it? Like once it's done? And because, you know, there's not many mediums here. Uh, obviously, we also don't get uh, a lot of OTT coverage. Uh, yeah. The likes of Netflix, Amazon. My documentaries are not so Television pe lagti hai. What do you do with your documentary when you're done with it? So um, the ones that I made before, I would say that um, we, we kind of screen them at different festivals. So any platform that we can find, whether it's like local, international, um, you know, it's kind of like, okay, here's an issue that this documentary is addressing. Would you like to film, screen this at your uh, platform? So by doing that, you kind of open that uh, door to like dialogue, conversation. People are suddenly talking about, let's say, education, poverty, child labor. And that's the aim over here. You kind of want people to get that conversation going. Okay, okay you know, let's talk about this. Let's see what we have. And that's sort of the aim. Get it out there. You know, that's where we see it going. And, you know, of course, there's a financial element to this. Obviously, I assume you don't make much money from these it's things. It's a shoestring budget. It's a shoestring <laughs> yeah. budget, yeah. And, and there must also be an element of, your parents and their concerns or their fears for their daughter, is that ever an issue? Yeah, so my mom has been a huge support. And uh, so in the beginning, my dad was kind of like, okay, you want to be a lawyer, you know, why aren't you going in that direction? What's mm. happening? But I think the whole entire idea at the end of the day is kind of proving that, you know, this is something serious and this means something to you. So there's always that concern because every documentary I've made, it's not been in Islamabad. It's mm. either been out of Islamabad. It's in the rural areas. It's in. So there's always that, how are you going to do this? You know, I, this run us through it. Like, what, how's it going to be? Talk to us about it. So that's kind of my... How many people are on set with you? Not many. It, it, it's, it's really, it's never really cut and dried. Sometimes you have three people, sometimes you have four, sometimes you have, because like, for example, when I made my second documentary, it was in uh, the Brick Hills in Lahore. So when we were going there, ek to, we were not allowed, they, were, they told us that you're not allowed to bring many people because going over there and interviewing these people, we won't want, from there on, we weren't allowed to do that. So it was kind of like, hide your camera. Mm. You have to go as if you are just visiting or just, you know, uh, maybe just, we just want to show you around, but not, don't look like you're coming to film. So we went with two people. We went with, so that, it really kind of depends. It's never very cut and dried. Sometimes if it's a safer environment in which you can have other people around, then we have five people or it's, so it's kind of like. And ranges. do you have partners in this or do you have different like teams you set up for every documentary? Different teams that I set up for every documentary. So there's a different one for this one and there's been a different one for the previous ones it's always different and have you ever been in a situation that actually felt unsafe to you you know there's a lot of stigma uh, with uh, you know the safety and security situation in rural parts of Pakistan for women so yeah um, I would say the unsafest I felt was I think when I was making my second documentary because we had to go to Brick Hills in Lahore and over there 
the owners, so there were people already trapped in the trapped in bonded labor over there. So you already have people in that start tough situation and they're not allowed to be interviewed. So even the people we were interviewing weren't allowed to be there. Hmm. So they were worried that, you know, we're not allowed to be here. What's going to happen? So the fact, and then when we had to go visit them, it was kind of like, okay, hide your camera. Don't say this, don't say that. You know, when, and then the brick hill owners even came when we were there. So it was kind of like, they were asking, who are these people? I think that was the first time I kind of felt like, oh, you know, I, this is, you know, this, this is, is not, this is not easy. <laughs> it's mm. a little, you know, dangerous. And but that didn't put you off? You wanted to no, keep going? No, it just kind of got me interested. You know, like, what are they hiding? Why is this so, t why don't they want the story to be out? Let, you know, let's push for this more. Mm. So, yeah. And do you think that this industry has, uh, or has room for a lot more f female uh, filmmakers? As in, do you feel like there's a gap that maybe you're fulfilling and more should come in? Or do you think that this is, it's a tough place to be? Uh, I mean, like we've had, for example, Haman Mir was on the show and he was saying that uh, not to be a journalist because of safety and security issues or because, mm, whatever he was saying, he had his opinions on it. Like, what do you think, uh, for, for generally for girls, is this a, a good avenue or... Because money is tight, uh, safety, security is an issue. I mean, it has to be something you really deeply care about, right? So if you're passionate about it, I think for sure. There's so much, um, there's a huge gap, I think, right now. And this is such a multifaceted profession in the sense that you've got, I mean, we're sort of uncovering the truth. It, it kind of gives you, ex it, you're exposing different issues. You're talking about change. You're pushing for social activism. So if you are passionate and this is something you are interested in, then definitely, I like every profession, you have to prove yourself. It's just a matter of proving yourself. I think we are under this impression that, oh, women, um, you know, they women and film, it doesn't really work together. Mm. And because people keep kind of drilling that in that, you know, culture, our cultural norms, because obviously we are a developing country. Religion is, you know, it does influence, um, mm. does influence our country. So we're sort of made to believe that, you know, women aren't really in this field. Women, but I think if you were just to kind of take a stand and go in that direction, you'd realize there's so much opportunity and you just need to keep proving yourself and people will keep taking you seriously. And what makes you passionate? Like, how did you... I mean, do you, can you recall a time when you were younger as to why social issues became such an important part of your life or was it just always the case? Um, so I think um, when I started filming, um, I think my mom was always into like, um, she would do a lot of social work and she was always, and I would always go with her wherever she would be. What did your mom do uh, social um, work wise? So she was actually the president of the Lions Club when I was younger and then... What's the, the Lions Club? So they... So generally, like, she would do a lot for women. So the Lions Club and all, they do a lot for the whole charity events and they help, um, you know, different um, underprivileged or they have different events in which they're raising money. And um, in the sense that after that, every sort of, you know, issue or any problem that would kind of occur, she'd be in the forefront that, okay, um, if, you know, we need, uh, let's say, provisions in Afghanistan, let's go for that. You know, I'm here, collect them. My house is there. You know, we need to help someone. Let's. So she was very much in the forefront, always. Mm. And I remember sort of always seeing her. And then I, and because I was always into filmmaking since I was younger, I would kind of do a lot of recreational filmmaking. And I remember there was this one time in particular, there was uh, this, I think, uh, there was a boy collecting trash and he was outside the public a, a public school and he was sort of collecting trash and I was filming him and I sort of followed him and kind of, you know, kind of thought, okay, let's see where he goes and what, you know, and then I sat and spoke to him. So there was this sort of, desire of just wanting to be a normal school going boy and he kind of talked to me of how he just wanted a normal life and like I can think it was then that I realized that we hardly know about the struggles of others so I kind of put the footage I had together and I made a, a short sort of a feature and I sent it in for the school competition we had and after what people was the school watched, competition called it was called it was called Frodak, I think. Frodak. It's in Frobels. Yeah, you know I won that too when I was seven. I was the first ever winner of Frodak. Really? Yeah, yeah. This is like two thousand nine or something. So yeah, I yeah. entered into Frodak, and I think after that, and then I screened it there, and I sc and I showed it to other people around, like um, you know other gatherings. But I, mm. so everyone was kind of there was suddenly like open conversations about education, child labor, poverty, mm. and it kind of like struck me that you know what a it can be such a cathartic experience and this can sort of push for, you know, change and like it kind of mobilizes, you know, you kind of understand where this is going. It's yeah. so different. And people are actually talking about this issue. So, so why didn't you go to film school? Why didn't I go to film mm -hmm. school? Um, because I think I didn't take this seriously in the beginning myself in the sense that I thought that there has to be a very clear division, passion and profession. I think okay. that's kind of what we're made to believe. Yeah, you, can't, culture. Uh, yeah. you can't overlap, you know, it has to be separate. So I thought, okay, lawyer, that's the profession I have going. And this is my passion. I mean, I, for me, I thought, okay, I have it figured out. Seems clear cut hmm. enough, you know, hmm. lawyer and TK on the side. I am making films, but you know, it's hmm. there. You can primarily lawyer. Yeah, that's what I thought. And I would see like family members, you know, going to court and I was like, okay, you know, this is where I see myself 
you know, a lawyer making a change and that's where it's going to be. That's what it's going to be like. So but where do you see yourself now? I see myself as a filmmaker. And for sure. where do you see yourself going? Like, what's the end goal? The end goal is, um, I think, I, what I really want is to sort of provide a global platform to address, you know, issues sort of in the sense that talk about causes and people who are making a social impact in our, uh, in, in our country. And also not only sort of champion people who are, you know, sort of not only highlight people who are sort of suffering or going through these issues, but also champion people who are making a difference. You know, talk about the achievements. I mean, we have people on the forefront making changes every day and no one talks about them. And I think it's important that if you highlight that, others can see and go like, okay, you know, we can succeed in our cause too. So that's sort of the platform I want to provide. And I think that... Um, push for like if my documentaries can make an impact on that level and I would, would really hope that it could push for you know legislative change policy change and that's kind of where I see it going and do you want to continue just in the documentary film uh, side or do you want to go towards features or I don't know something else mm -hmm. like Shamin eventually did like documentary films then she did a animated film and I think now she's doing a film if I'm correct but yeah would you want to go into features at some point I don't, I, th I mean, at this point, I don't see myself going to features. Wow. I, I, because I feel like where you're sort of, you see, at the end of the day, I really want to connect sort of solutions to viable solutions or tangible solutions to problems that are existing. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I'll kind of miss that if I, you know, start going to a different direction or start making films. Like the whole cause, the whole purpose of why I'm here in the first place, it's going to sort of, you know, that's going to you know, fade away. Yeah, mm. for sure. But then in terms of like impact, do you feel like, enough people watch documentaries or so there's obviously the the you know award buzz things like that but then in terms of impact uh, yeah. are people watching more film or or, or i don't know tv shows or uh, you know rubbish on youtube like <laughs> this maybe <laughs> but things like that or are they watching do so for example like so many people know who shamir you know is how many people have actually seen saving face yeah how many people have actually seen it I, I, not many i'm i'm sure uh, like if i did a poll you know, six out of ten, seven out of ten people haven't even seen it. Yeah. We'll celebrate the Oscar and then whatever, you know? Yeah. Do you feel like, I sometimes feel like, chalo, let me let me rephrase that, that impact has to also be in, in an area where people are actually intuitively watching, right? Yeah. So, for example, uh, the beauty of the internet is there are people who are consuming so much content. If you want to reach the do you feel like a documentary is necessarily going to hit uh, that of arm or not? I think it depends. It depends how you put it together. I mean, uh, people, like you said, haven't seen Saving Face, but at the same time, there are people who watched. I mean, let's talk about, um, there was a Michael Moore documentary that came out and it, it was about, um, I'm forgetting the exact title, but it was about gun control. Okay, and I haven't seen that one. That, so the fact is the way the documentary came out, it sort of influenced policy change. Okay, we've got, we had, um, after there was a high school shooting and then the whole documentary came out. And it influenced policy, policy change in the sense that Kmart stopped selling um, handguns. And it was a small policy change, but it still kind of pushed, was pushed to the right direction. But do you feel like that could happen in Pakistan? I mean, in Pakistan, we have a feudal system. We don't know if the Wazir Azam in this world that we live in. I think it's in. too early to say though. I think that to say that you know that it can't is just too early. I mean, Shermina Bech, you know, is Oscar and Shermina Bech herself and her documentaries, they're, they're at a very early stage. I mean, we're just getting into the whole, okay, documentary filmmaking, mm. this is what it is. To say that it doesn't make an impact or it won't, I think that's diff It's. I don't think that's it. It's a, too yeah, early to it's say. Too early yeah, to no, say. that's fair. That's fair. Maybe it's the pessimist in me because <laughs> generally speaking, we really bought in okay. Someone has to pave that way. For sure. So, for example, yeah. before Shamin Ube, you know, did we even make documentaries? Not exactly. that I know of. Exactly. Uh, did women work in documentaries? I'm sure they did. Uh, yeah. But again, not not on a uh, you know larger scale. So, level. like for example, you've got people who don't watch seasons, and you've people who do watch. You know, so it really depends. Like I had never seen Saving Face, but after Shamin Ube the one, or after there was some buzz that okay, you know, there is, I saw it. Like I saw the documentary she made. I, you what do you think of it? I thought it was good. Yeah, yeah, I thought I thought definitely like I thought it was good. The fact that we were sort of addressing, you know, acid attack victims talking about it. So it was a good documentary and it was something I think that people needed to see and needed to hear about. And do you think, uh, you know, that, uh, for example, these kind of documentaries and what's going on, for example, like Malala and these mm -hmm. figures, who are like women heroes of yours? Pakistan, mein ho, bahir ho, jo bhi? A women heroes in yeah. relation to documentary? In, or? You know, just... In general, so you just people you admire, inspired by. It could be the woman in uh, Mardan, sorry, was it Mardan? Yeah. Yes, uh, for the documentary, it could be anyone. Any just so women that inspire you. Women 
something that inspired me. So um, I would say, yeah. So could I see my mother? Because yeah, yeah of like, course. Yeah. I feel like yeah, she is a yeah. huge inspiration to that, where I am and what I've done. I feel like with, so looking at her, I am where I am now. Like I feel like she is so powerful and whatever she's achieved, it kind of makes me feel like, okay, you know, I can do it. I can do it. So even when I feel like people were sort of questioning me and going like, you know, what are you doing? To the point that I was questioning myself, mm. she was like, you know, it doesn't matter. So what if people are questioning you? Challenge them, you know, take it up as a challenge and just mm. prove them wrong. So yeah, I would say that's, that. That's really nice. Yeah. yeah and very say. not typical of a Pakistani <laughs> mom. Yeah. Mashallah, that's great. Yeah. I said, what about like, uh, you, you mentioned seasons earlier, right? So, are there films that inspire you? Or are there films that you watch and go like, this is fantastic? What's a what's your favorite film? What's my favorite film? Oh, that's a tough one. There's so many, though. How can I pick? Um, I can tell you my favorite documentary, though. Okay, then go, go for that. Um, Let's start with that. Currently, the one I watched, actually, actually I watched two which were really good. One was uh, 14 Peaks. Nothing is impossible. I don't know. It's yeah, like Netflix it's documentary. Netflix. Yeah, I've seen it. And yeah. it was pretty good. I yeah. really like that the way. And the other one was Val. I don't know if you've seen that. That came out in, I think, two years ago it's about Val Kilmer oh yeah, 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 yeah. Really, really I good. saw the ad for it but actually oh. I really liked Val Kilmer as a kid so I didn't want to watch oh, it oh it was so good it was basically why he's dying I don't <laughs> no the documentary was so good it's the way it's put together it depends how you see it now So he's like my favorite act not my favorite but I really liked some of his movies plus he was Batman and I was like inspired and stuff and I loved him yeah. so why would I want to watch him die like that's just he's not dying though but he's dying <laughs> But the documentary shows all. He everything can't talk else. in it. He's got like I this know. thing in his throat. Like, how is, isn't that depressing? But the, yeah, but the way that it was made, in the sense that his, so it's kind of like all this archival footage that he had, the way it was put together, and the way that his son is sort of, it's, it's being portrayed of his son is kind of giving his voice as if he is Val. Mm. So he kind of talks, you know, in first person through his experiences. So that was really interesting. It was very captivating. The whole way it was put together. So I have a question now that yeah. just came to my mind. In when you're shooting these sort of documentaries about these inspiring people or even, you know, tough situations. Yeah. Does that mentally affect you, do you think, sometimes? Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, when you're... So the thing is that when you're making documentaries, there's this... And then when you're interviewing people, there's this very fine line that you have to make sure that... You have to show that, okay, I'm not, you know, monetizing on their misery or I'm sort of, like, championing their cause. So you, it's a very fine line between both those things. And then you sort of have to have this burden of you know, sort of doing justice to their words and their feelings and sort of telling the story exactly as it needs to be told. So a lot of times when you're interviewing people, there's so much emotion happening and there's so much, so much you know, emotion that's being shared. You sort of have to be very neutral and you have to be, so that your emotions don't sort of, you know, influence them in any way. Or if you sort of be like, oh, you're showing that you're sad or you're showing that you're happy, then maybe they feel like, oh, maybe we shouldn't say this, we should say this. So it becomes very tough. So in those situations... I mean, holding back has been really kind of like, it's hard, but, you know. And do you become desensitized to the situation? I mean, it's like, you know, like I have friends who are doctors. Yeah, okay, doctors pehli dafa, <laughs> are always, yeah. yeah. No, pehli dafa jib, you know, like I have this friend, he's a pediatrician. And the first time a child died, he, he yeah. was at my house. So I was saying, man, it's depression. Obviously, aap, you know, you see death mm. for the first time, especially a baby, it's, it's, yeah. it's sad. But over, you know, the course of the next five years, he's now become very relaxed. He'll be like, yeah, four expired ho the. And that sounds horrible, but it it's because, true. unfortunately, yeah. wo ek dunya mein hai, ja ye hoga. do you feel like you're, you know, in, in as you grow older and the more you do documentaries, you're becoming desynthesized to these things? No, if anything, I feel like it's the total opposite. I think, yeah. Achha. Because I feel like every story is completely different. So mm. it's not like you are seeing the same thing over and over again. It's you have a totally different story. You have a totally different experience. You aren't prepared for any experience that you're going through. So every time something happens, you're just like, you know, it, it takes you by surprise. And those emotions, they're, they're new emotions coming in every time. So it's not like it's the same thing and you're desensitized. That that doesn't happen at all. It's very different. To that. Mm. And, and when you're shooting, I'm assuming that you obviously don't get all the footage you need. Yeah. Yeah. Here is another issue that, you know, like access to, for example, capital is hai, or even the production teams you have to set up don't have that much experience. Yeah. I'm sure there's mentorship ka bhi issue hota hoga. Um, in, in all of this, like, let's say you're unable to find mentors or you're unable to find teams, etc. How do you map out the process and how difficult is it to, for example... Uh, like, do you have like a, you can do one documentary a year or can you do as many as, I mean, is it, is there limitations to your craft just because of the environment right now? So it depends, like, um, as far as this, the, the story goes, like getting the top, are you asking about how the process is to filming or like? No, I'm asking, let's say you found a story, mm -hmm. right? Is it, is, is it 
a case of things get stuck because situation as he hai you know someone's not agreeing to it also funding is that an issue i mean you must not have access to a lot of capital right i mean yeah. this is not like the us for national geographic or discovery or netflix or someone is funding yeah. so wo issue aata hai as in are there like 10 stories on your table you want to make and you can only make one a year or are you making as many as possible right now so yeah the main issue is that I can't make as many as I would like to mm. and uh, funding is always a problem because like I said before documentary filmmaking is it's always made on a shoestring budget I mean mm. sometimes you get very supportive executive producers and sometimes you don't like we had on the current uh, the one that I just made we had some pretty supportive executive producers we had an organization from Qatar we had um, the connector which is from Austin so they were our executive producers that kind of helped us go through with it Etch, so you had executive producers for this one what exactly does connect her do So Connector is this um non-profit organization that's based in Austin and they sort of work towards um you know promoting it, stories of women and girls through f- the medium of film. Okay. So oh, they, yeah, so, like, yeah. Yeah, so it works Match like made that. in heaven. Yeah, for sure. And <laughs> so how did you reach out to Connector? So I actually sort of work for them. Okay. Um in the sense that I submitted Ye my to Yeah, so the thing is in hai. the sense <laughs> so what happens is that I um submitted my first film to them back in they had they have their own film festival actually so okay. we didn't like connect her film is like was, a film festival yeah it was called something else back then it was called girls impact the world uh, okay. back then when i submitted my first film so i submitted my first film to them and i got uh, and they were in collaboration with harvard and then i went over there i got shortlisted they invited me and you know you went I, to harvard yeah nice and i want this is when i was in my final year of law so there was that panic also that my law exams are mm. happening and then there was that panic that i was going But that's cool yeah, yeah that must have been amazing it was it was kind of like do i give my law papers or do i go to harvard and attend this you festival you go to harvard i mean come on yeah exactly no, that was law but, to baad mein bhi ho jayega my dad thought otherwise though he yeah. said so, <laughs> but, but yeah. that's all dad think otherwise yeah. that's okay yeah so yeah so the thing is that I submitted my first film there and um after that I just kind of kept kind of reaching out to them so they have like their own sort of projects and their fundraisers so you know and just staying connected to them kind of being like okay you know how do I do this how can I you know help with this how can I do this so staying connected with the organization mm. and then they kind of reached out and went like okay you know um why don't you launch a chapter over here or or sort of represent us have a film screening over here and okay. then kind of that's kind of how we you know our paths crossed and i've just kind of been with them ever since i've hold workshops for kids over here being a connector representative so we sort of um give basic filmmaking training to kids students and um they win like, and then kind of encourage them to submit to the connector film festival then they win scholarships also okay so i've got like three four students have already won like scholarships through the connector film festival by you know kind of addressing and can only girls like apply to this no no or? it's boy the, the last person student who won was a boy but it's called connect her Yeah, so it's based on <laughs> <But> like, <laughs> what difference is that? I don't know. I just assumed so it was like a women's film. I tell you why it's called Connector because yeah. it's um talks about addressing issues and stories of women and girls. Ah, okay. So That's the why story has to be about yeah, a girl. Yeah, the story has to be about a girl. But it can be shot by yeah, a dude. Yeah, it can be. I mean, yeah, they have faith in guys too. Okay, it's fair it's fair not fair. Fair. I think because like I remember there was a film women through film or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That. that was only the women. Yeah, the only so yeah, I remember because they hired us for something and they're like but you're dudes and I was like like I can't change that like No, I know. Even, even, you no. <laughs> even the students that I give uh, filmmaking tasks to, they're just like, you know, we feel like there isn't enough justice being done to the boys. I mean, mm. what is this? Why is everything just women, women, women related? But I'm just like, you know. But I mean, we, I mean, boys can't say that they had hundreds of years where it was the other way around. So I think <laughs> they can get used to it. Acha, um, okay, I'm not going to take much more of your time. I just have a couple of final questions. Yeah. Um, okay, so the first question that I have is, uh, is in terms of your most important uh, documentary so far i know one is winning awards and all of that so that should be theoretically but is that your favorite work you've done so far or what is your favorite work you've done um, so far um this one for sure for sure yeah okay. it just it has a very emotional connection i think i you know i I I don't know it just that the way it was filmed the way I sort of met each person and sat with each person I kind of felt like I made a connection with everyone I interviewed it was very it took longer to film also there was covid so the school you know it shut it open I think the fact that it took longer also made that connection sort of last longer right. and I feel like it just made it you know so much more captivating in the sense that do, I just wanted to do more justice to their story I wanted to make sure I got everything right and by the end of it you know when I started it's kind of like when you start you're just like I don't know how this is going to come together mm. and then when it started coming together it and it's very rare that I get emotional after making a film that I have sort of directed and yeah. put together but when I was watching this film I was getting emotional really? and yeah and I thought oh you know this it it probably means something you know that it, if I feel like that and 
how important is you know the uh, awards or the adulation you get from people like the, you know artists generally i've noticed and this is this is fair to all of us uh, uh, who work right we want some sort of recognition recognition yeah. right hum matlab khwari kar rahe hain to hame aage se kuch to mile na in return does that matter to you a lot or do you think that does it matter to everyone really uh, i think that um, so what really matters to me is that if the documentary i make if it can get that sort of traction that i wanted to get that's what really matters to me as far as personal recognition i don't really care much for that i mean it's obviously it's nice and all but at the end of the day if your documentary isn't going the direction that you wanted to if you it's not pushing for that kind of change that you see it and it just sort of d- dying like it gets kind of you know gets published and that's kind of it and you know what about the people behind do they ever sort of you know does, do they ever sort of get any solution do they ever mm. sort of is there any end to it or is just sort of like a problem and that's it so for me i think that matters a lot like you know yeah I, that makes sense yeah i teacher last thing uh why don't you tell us where we can find your work uh and where can we watch these documentaries so currently the current documentary it's not going to be out till i think september Sep- next september yeah because what happens is that when you uh, when the documentary is on the festival circuit you cannot you're, yeah, you're not allowed you to you're not allowed to run the out. risk of being disqualified but or, are there any screenings you're doing for it So not right now because also because our executive producers have been really sort of tight in the fact that when we've talked about the team with the team and Are you hoping else. for like a Khan or an Oscar kind of situation is that With this it? one? Yeah. Um no I, I don't Have you submitted to any other festivals? Yes, a lot. Rain They, down something like that. I don't yes. know. Okay. Yeah, Fair so enough. there are a lot of others that have been submitted and um we're kind of hoping that you know something big happens on that front but I mean small steps one day at a time let's see where it goes. So okay. far so good so you know. And where can they find you on social media or on YouTube? So you can find Purani documentaries lagi hui kahin? Oh no, I don't think they are. They might be available with on the connector page but they are not available online. So okay, why don't you put them online so that we can watch <laughs> them? That would also help, yeah, right? Yeah, I think I will I think I'll do that. Isn't there is the one that I think the second or third one I've made is available online but because you know aage piche they haven't really been, you know, on Yeah, the- yeah. So just put some online so that we can watch them and uh, we're really looking forward to the rest of your career and we're wishing you all thank the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um thank you guys for watching and uh, we'll see you next time